Hi there, welcome to Bust the Net as we continue our uh, series on Torino. But before I begin, I'm going to take a look at something I've wanting to do for a long time. I've wanted to look at the FM community as a whole. And uh, I think some of the challenges that new players have is identifying resources that can help them as they want to play the game. Now, these could be resources in as far as skins are concerned or tactics or even sometimes getting inspired by stories of people who have great saves. So on today's show and probably every other show, I'm going to do something that Cleon has been doing on his website. Uh, he calls it the community in focus and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And um, I'm going to pinch ideas from him. I hope he doesn't mind. But I think the idea here for us is to actually get good content out and get people to recognize this new content and in certain cases it actually is helpful because um, the material generally is almost the direction that they take can be new and it can be written in an entertaining way in terms of tactics trust me tactics are really simple if you find somebody over complicating it then chances are the the over complication is just to mask their lack like of understanding of the engine. If you really understand the engine really well, trust me, you don't have to overcomplicate. In fact, it gets so simple, it, you'd be laughing. So before I uh, get down to it, uh, one of the one of the members in the community that recently I've been noticing their content is FM Regen. FM Regen's content is quite brilliant. You know, he's he's got a really good blog. Uh, the blog's name is um, FM Regen. He looks obviously like a Leicester fan. So. <laughs> What a, what a folks, a Leicester City story. So you, you're going to find lots of Leicester stories on his blog. And you're going to find a lot of detailed information on stories as well. As well as um, lower league management, which I find um, there aren't a lot of guys who cover lower league management. And he's got some really cool stories. And these stories, they are indeed, he does cover them in quite a lot of depth as to how he has uh, found players, how he develops the players and how he tracks the players. So... Follow FM Regen, his blog. You'll find his blog at hinkleyafc.wordpress.com. That's his blog. And the guy's name is FM Regen. Another person that you want to actually keep a track on, also, of course, Cleon. Cleon has this segment called In Focus on his um, website, sisportcenter.com. And uh, he has uh, done a lot of uh, roles as well. Like He's one of the uh, roles that I find there's a lack of explanation is the Engash. And um, you will find details on the Angash over on his blog as well. So whenever you find yourself in a spot of bother and you're not sure about tactics, trust me, one of the first places you want to go to is, you know, catch up on Cleon. Cleon, even if you are dropping him a note or question, he's probably going to answer you. Of course, you'll find all of us at SI Forums. Yeah, you find me, Cleon, RT, Fan, quite a lot of us, you know, uh, we, we are hanging about the tactics and training forum and we try to help as many people as we can our whole goal is not actually to create a tactic again so you can go out there and play it we basically want you to understand the engine so what we do is we guide you and we help you and we're glad when people actually do well now another great site i find it's one of my favorite sites is uh chris darwin's come on your video i mean like it's actually i i keep saying that <laughs> even i want if i want to find chris darwin's uh Twitter account, I just go type, come on your video, I don't know why, it's been stuck, it's been stuck for many years now, and uh, here you got his blog, the Higher Tempo Press, very nice blog, very well designed, I like his blog, in fact, sometimes I just want to keep it as simple as he has, um, it's clean look, and uh, he's got a lot of phenomenally and well-written stories, uh, his new pieces, the uh, teaching the old boys new tricks, and this is about uh, the Swiss club, yeah, Old Basel. He had one on who the mm, ab oblique, which was also a cool story uh, if you followed it. He's I love the way he writes, and these are some of the these are some of the really cool people who write great stories on and their background and their environment as football manager. So you definitely want to go check um, the higher tempo press dot com. That's the name of the website. So for today, I'm looking at the higher-tempo-press.com. Of course, you know, we have SI Sports Center. Uh, and then we have FM Regen. These are the three. Uh, there are going to be lots more. And if you guys find come across a website or a blog and you think is 
underrated and you feel that people should actually be going there more often and because their content has helped you please drop me a note let me know i will plug it because i think that at the moment the fm community is not as united as i think it could be i think if we can focus our strengths on trying to help people out instead of helping ourselves then you know it'll go further why am i doing this very simple reason you're gonna find every season some bright spark will come along the way and he writes a great story or he comes up with a new idea on how to approach tactics or he might design a new skin we want to encourage that we want these people not to be forgotten okay so as if you find some underrated blog underrated site a person that you know could do with some following and the fact of the matter is you think this person can help other people just give me a shout out no let me know i will definitely cover them in the next show i plan to do this and i plan to do a community in focus segment every week on this show so that the ins and the outs and the adventures of everybody playing fm is included because this show isn't all about me or torino diaries it's about all of us playing one game that we've loved for the last 20 over years well now i think it's time for me to catch up with torino and my priorities one of the things that i do every season at around this point is go through my scout reports have a filter set up for my baseline attributes for young players and then i will untick one by one to see what kind of players they are whether they have the potential sometimes i'll untick passing uh, I'll go for, definitely I want some pace as an acceleration in the players, but if they don't have, then I'll just go at pace. First touch, natural fitness and determination. I, there are certain attributes that take a really long time to develop are like, you know, determination takes a heck of a long time. First touch can improve, but if they already come with first touch, it's even better. Another option is, of course, people like to look at the stars, right? Um, I don't really care about stars that much. And I go through my players and then I have this filter set up and I choose accordingly. So now I only want players who are aged between 17 to 18 and I'm looking for a position that I can fill. Here I have this player called Rui Pereira. Okay, so his stats don't look half bad. 14 for acceleration, natural fitness is very high, pace is not bad, stamina is fantastic, uh, the range that is. So here I will, um, I'll get a scout um, from my scouting pool to spend a bit more time scouting this play out and I, so that I can get more ac uh, more accurate list of attributes. Now, I also like to scout players that fit into my system where they can score goals and here I have this guy who is uh, 14 for first touch, finishing is only 10, composure is 9, he's only 17 years old and he has time to develop Okay, so his pace is strong, he may not be able to jump very high, his heading is half decent, concentration is for these are things that he can improve, off the ball is fantastic, so he's going to find a lot of movement, so in this particular case, I will definitely make a bid for him, he's only 17 years old, and he's cheap, so I'll make an offer, and see what they say, okay, so then, um, another position that I'm probably going to make money from is um, the centre bank. Here I'm going to be looking, he has all the right attributes already, so we'll make an offer straight away. Well, that's just a highlight of what I do for scouting. Here we are, we're all set for the next match. It's, we're going to have to be using a 4-2-3-1 against our friends, Napoli. Uh, some of these players haven't had a chance to play. I'm going to look at Belotti, Z Gomez, I'll just give Belotti a chance to play the game later, if he has to come on. Here we go, uh, Napoli using a 4 2 3 1 just like us. We go fluid. Instructions are not going to overlap. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Use offside trap, definitely. And we're off. Let's see how the boys do. Here I'm race to Joginho. I'm looking at how spread out they are. Uh, my AM and AM R and left AM, I mean my AM L and my AM R have been total mark tighter. So they'll be closer to their fullbacks. 
when they have the ball. Hopefully, they also tackle them. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to have happened just now. Hamsig is true. Oh, he shoots Padelli. No, it comes out for the save. Was my defensive line not high enough? But they should be defensive against me. Most of the teams are. Kaleon. Oh, that's too easy for the Alejandro. He's going to find Gomez now. Can Gomez do enough? Oh, he can't. So Napoli at the moment are defensive. So we will continue to observe. If Napoli go into a defensive system, your widget will tell. Some of the widgets actually tell you when they go defensive. So they haven't gone defensive. They'll, they'll go out defensive for 2 3 1 wide or something like that. Prima, Alejandro. Back to Bruno Perez, to Alan, Z Gomez. Oh, he's got the players coming into the box. Pereira goes down inside the box, but it's not a penalty. Vaselli picks it up, back heels it to Alan. Alan quickly finds Bruno Perez. Perez will try and beat two players to get the cross in, but he can't do that. Luis Adriano now has the ball, has got plenty of uh, chance. He looks up and waits for Remy Reyes to do the overlapping run. Plays it out wide to Andre. First time to Kalion. Oh, Kalion should have done a lot better with that opportunity. Z Gomez now has a chance to turn the attack, a defense to a counter attack. What a transition, but his first touch and his ball control were not good enough. This is Z Gomez's chance and uh, Matteo Pereira's chance to seal a place in their first 11. Defended well, Barigini, Matheus Pereira, oh, what a bad pass from him. Silva again defends well, Alan to Barigini, 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 oh, he can't get past the wall that is Enrique. Okay, how did the boys do defend? They defend that very well, Prima to Baselli, Silva out to Matheus Pereira, that's an easy pass, he cannot miss that, Alejandro. Leading assist creator for this team at the moment, he he tops cre he is the most creative player in this team. Whether we are playing of whichever system we use, Barajini's goal is a beauty. Oh, that was a beautiful goal. Oh, that was so nice the way he took that ball down and he you know wrapped his foot around it. Z Gomez, brilliant pass. Look at that. Boom! Ah, Paragini gives Torino the early lead. They've gone a goal up. They weren't playing particularly well, uh, but they managed to make that one chance count. Z Gomez and Paragini, are they going to start the next game? Oh, I know you're capable of better. Come on, boys, I'm not going to hit you guys hard. But now I'm thinking of thinking of uh, Mr. either Alejandro or Bruno Perez. Because I need them for the match against Wolfsburg. Bruno Perez to Alan, Alan to Alejandro. Alejandro's pass is superb. Z Gomez looks for Paragini. Paragini cuts inside, takes a shot, but it's such a difficult angle. Gets a corner. Paragini with the corner. Oh, it's a bad corner, but it goes to Pateos Pereira, recycles it to Z Gomez. Uh, they can't do anything with the ball. The defending was superb from Napoli. Tries an ambitious, ambitious attempt at goal. Oh, it's a big change made by Napoli. They've taken off Luis Andriano. They are a striker up front. <laughs> Should make my defenders feel really good because he hasn't had a chance against. He hasn't been able to do much against our players. We're gonna start thinking about taking off Alejandro very soon. Alejandro is my first target for a change. Second target will be Bruno Perez. Carleon. Andre, lots of time. Oh, the boys. Oh yeah, they defended. Well, Albanos has a chance to take us to a highlight. 
the sea gomez what in the world did he just do <laughs> he thought the ball was going to go one direction so he ran there <laughs> that was hilarious okay albanos to juan me juan me up early to the frail the frail is surrounded by torino players Hamsik to Kaleon. Hamsik makes the run into the box if Kaleon can find him. He does and Hamsik equalizes. Ouch. Some or another that goal is going to happen. 65th minute. Marek Hamsik equalizes for Torino. Oh, that was horrible defending. Thank you. Oh, we'll just uh, make one shout. I'll drop my defensive line. And another shout will be hit early cross. Ryan with the f goal kick gets it to Flune Mori. Albanos to Ramirez. Ramirez the Hamsik, the goal scorer. Finds Juan Mi. Juan Mi is doing his best to do something with the ball. The Frel again, he pulls these players to him. With Dirk trying to defend. Oh, again. The defending is horrible. Let's make a substitution right now to solve that problem. We'll take off Chioza. Bring on a veteran defender in the form of Camel Glick. They've got defensive now, so we have to make sure that we don't screw things up. That's all. I don't mind taking a point from this. We've it'll be the first time we've not beaten Napoli. It's almost terrible news for us if we don't beat Napoli. The frail. Alan, uh, the players are really not giving them much space. Ramirez, except through the middle. <laughs> or oh, Baselli. Toe pokes the challenge. Z Gomez to Eliadro. Eliadro, what can he do? He finds Paragini. Oh my goodness, that was going to be a great, beautiful goal. If that had gone in, it would have been goal of the season and wonder assist from Alejandro. Oh, Paragini should have buried that opportunity. Torino playing rather poorly in this match against Napoli. And it's not something that I like to see. But then again, we have a game against Wolfsburg coming. So it's not entirely a bad thing. <laughs> so Prima, just to Prove the point. Decides to score from a corner. You see, sometimes you can play like shit and then still win. Oh, goodness. Prima. Rising up. Getting us a goal from the corner. We haven't been playing that well, but we have managed to take the lead. Very close to stoppage. Napoli are throwing everything into an attacking 4 2 3 1. I don't think they're going to get a goal back. Yeah. C. Gomez out to somebody and that is Calayon Pitante stoppage roughly blows the whistle and Napoli have lost to Torino a Torino side that wasn't playing very well but we still managed to get a 2-1 win using our 4-2-3-1 okay so that brings us around to the end of another show I hope you enjoyed the new segment, The Community in Focus. If you think that there are websites out there, YouTube videos or anything that needs some publicity, please, I would love to hear about them so that I can do a story on them too. Like the video. The more likes, the happier it is and the easier it is for me to get a bit more attention on this show. And uh, if you want to subscribe, you know where to click that button. Uh, please uh, drop me a comment if you think that I can help. And if you enjoyed the show, drop me a comment too. You know, I love all these comments that people have been making uh, quite a lot lately. And I appreciate it. I appreciate all the likes. I appreciate all the retweets and the reblogging. It really means a lot. And uh, it inspires me to keep on doing the show. So until we meet again next time around, you take care. I'll catch you guys again soon. Bye-bye.